Um, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen down in the south coast at Bournemouth, Simon, because uh, talk sports sources understand Bournemouth now very close to being taken over by a Las Vegas-based consortium. Here's the man who will tell us more, Alex Crook. Good morning. What do you know? Yeah, good morning, Jim, Simon, Martin. This uh, is really gathering pace quite quickly. We broke the news on Talk Sport late last night that Bournemouth uh, were in talks with a Las Vegas-based consortium, as you say. We now know that consortium very much is headed by the veteran American businessman Bill Foley. He is owner of the NHL, N- NHL side, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. He made his money in insurance, and he is in advanced negotiations with Bournemouth's current owner, Uh, the Russian-born British citizen Max Demin. And I'm told that this takeover is a matter of weeks as opposed to months away from being completed. So barring any late hitches, and of course there is always uh, the possibility these things can fall through, uh, Bournemouth will be the latest team in the Premier League to come under American ownership. Do we know the scale and size of the deal, Alex? Uh, I'm told he will be paying in excess of £100 million. Um, Max Demim has ploughed a lot more than that into the club in his decade-long ownership. He's taken them from League One into the Premier League. Um, So clearly, uh, he has invested a lot of his personal fortune to bankroll that success. Um, There are other backers, uh, but Bill Foley is very much the main man. Um, And as I say, from what I'm told, um, he is probably quite similar to Todd Bowley in that he's got that stake in American sport. So you can make the comparisons there. He's been fairly successful uh, with the Vegas Golden Knights. He led them to the prestigious Stanley Cup final. They've regularly made the end of season playoffs. Uh, So he's someone who knows his way around the sporting arena. And he has grand plans to improve the stadium. Uh, They've already got planning permission on a new training ground work is underway. And he will complete that as well. And there will be funds available for whoever the Bournemouth manager is come January when the transfer window opens. I mean, Alex, you know the club well. Do you think this would be a good time for Demon to sell up? I think so. Um, I think I've been hearing whispers for a while now that, that maybe he feels he's taken the club as far as he can. And that shouldn't be underestimated because, as I mentioned, uh, when he took over, they were uh, a lower, lower half of the table, League One side, to get them promoted to the Premier League not once but twice with gates of, what, 11,500? at the Vitality Stadium is an incredible achievement. And he kept them in the Premier League as well, albeit with the help of a genius manager in the form of Eddie Howe for five years. And and even if you look at the last few months, despite what Scott Parker was saying publicly, uh, Max Demin still did bankroll the club in the summer. He still spent uh, decent sums of money on uh, Marcus uh, Senesai, a defender from Argentina, and on Marcus Tavernier from Middlesbrough as well. He wasn't obliged to do that because it was pretty clear to him, I think, that he would sell the club sooner rather than later, but he wanted to give them the best possible chance of staying in the Premier League. And back in January as well, Scott Parker made certain demands. Those demands (laughs) were met, and ultimately the players that he signed helped them get promotion to the Premier League. So I think Max Demin will go away in the eyes of Bournemouth fans as a a genuine club legend. Yeah, but in in recent times, we know, Alex, that the same Scott Parker uh, made some comments, uh, did he not, Mm. in the media, about this supposed lack of investment uh, by Demin in the, in the summer, so we know what happened there. Parker paid for those comments largely with it, with his job. Um, does that explain it? Well, I think if you, if you look at it into the context now, I think those comments look even more unfair, probably on Max Demin, because obviously these talks have been going on for several months, right back to the start of the summer. I believe that Scott Parker was aware there was a strong possibility that the club sooner rather than later would be under new ownership. So I do wonder now with hindsight, if Scott Parker maybe wishes he'd taken a more patient approach because he could have been the manager come January that would have had funds to spend to try and help the team stay in the Premier League. But isn't isn't Max Denham now just almost admitting that, you know, spend, expenditure is needed and that he mm-hmm. wants to step aside for somebody else with bigger pockets? I mean, just an interesting thing, uh, Arsene Wenger had mentioned the other night, Jim, yeah. that there are 58 American owners of football clubs around Europe can you believe that? And 22 years ago, those owners didn't even know the rules for English football. They call it soccer. We play. We call it football. Mm. And it's an, isn't it amazing that this is another, yet another American owner that's coming in? It's fantastic news probably for Bournemouth, but it is disappointing that we are losing all these English Well, as we know, owners. Simon, others view them as a clear and present danger, don't they? And there is an element of what Gary Neville says um, to, be, to be mindful of. You will have, if Bournemouth are acquired, you will have nine of the 20 Premier League clubs under majority or significant control so that gives you 45% you then have two other clubs in the Premier League in West Ham 
um, and Manchester City that have significant US investment in, in it as well. So when we start talking about the landscape changing, when we start hearing people like Todd Bowley suggesting that there should be a playoff for the third relegation spot and scenarios like that and that there's a lot to be learned from US sports, which of course you can learn something from everything, you start to feel that there will be an underlying narrative that the Premier League, if it gets more and more American owners in there, will start to change. And things like relegation and Ireland sailing off into the sun, like the European Super League that was so vilified, may not be too far away from places like the Premier League. <laughs> relegation? What is this relegation? Um, interestingly, Alex, I don't know what your take is on this. We know that Gary O'Neill, known to as well here at TalkSport, is in interim charge at Bournemouth. He was asked about this uh, proposed takeover this morning. I haven't considered any anything ar- around takeovers, discussions upstairs, my position, wh- whatever that is, it is. Um, I know it's, it's going to be boring for you guys, but I'm just fully focused. Every, literally every minute of my day is taken up by how, how we go about Newcastle for the last, well, since I heard the Brighton game was off. Um, my, my wife and kids will tell you every minute of my day so far since that is Newcastle, either on a laptop, on the grass with the lads, um, pure focus on, on how we go there, have an impact on the game and, and come away with a positive result again. Thanks, Gary. Very diplomatic, wasn't it, Alex? Well, you would expect that from from Gary O'Neill. And in fairness, what more can he say, really, while these talks go on behind the (laughs) scenes? I I think what will happen now is that we know Gary O'Neill will be in charge tomorrow. Bournemouth up against their former manager, Eddie Howe. That will be a a very emotional occasion, I think, for Eddie in the home dugout. And I think Gary O'Neill will probably also be in charge for at least the first game back after the international break. And probably uh, this takeover talk explains maybe why Bournemouth are taking their time over appointing a successor for Scott Parker. I know there's a lot of work that's gone behind, gone on behind the scenes from the current board members. They've done their due diligence. They have a list of managers that they would possibly like to appoint. But clearly, uh, Bill Foley and his American consortium are going to want to have a fairly big say. And that's only right when you take over a football club. Alex, this this potential takeover, do you think this is good news for, for Gary O'Neill? Gives him longer in the seat? He's just won. I mean, you look at the game they won at Forest, which honestly, you know, was down to him. The tactical changes he made at half time, he played with a four, then ended up with a five, made a change at half time to bring in Fredericks on, put Tavernier out on the left wing, totally transformed their performance. And they just wouldn't stop at a draw. They went for a win and they drew at Wolves. So that's four points after nine nil drubbing at, at Anfield. I mean, he's looking like he could actually do the job. Gary O'Neill is a very intelligent football guy, someone that I've known from when he was a teenager and came through at Portsmouth. I think he has got a career in management. He's made those ambitions pretty clear. Do I think it will be at Bournemouth this time around? Probably not, in all honesty. I would be surprised if they go down that route. I think they would want somebody uh, with more experience. I think Gary himself might want to maybe cut his managerial teeth full-time in the championship. But it can't do him any harm, can it? If, if, If clubs outside the Premier League maybe are looking at making a change, as you say, he's got that positive result against Forest. He got the point against Wolves. If he gets results in these next two games, I think certainly it's going to look very good on his CV. And, and I think Bournemouth are in very safe hands with Gary O'Neill. OK, Alex, thank you very much indeed. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.